Welcome to GER Hub Mathematics and Statistics Lessons. Today I'm going to be talking about linear expressions and equations. Okay, now the essence of making this video is to enable you understand subsequently the difference between linear expressions and equations and to also help you understand the idea of um, quadratic expressions and equations. It will also help you in plotting the linear graphs and the quadratic graphs, okay? And it will, by extension, help you in your understanding of linear and quadratic inequalities. So, I want to start with in this video with differentiating what is called a linear expression from a linear equation. So, let's begin. Now, let's start with defining a linear expression. So, a linear expression, a linear expression is a mathematical statement. A linear expression is a mathematical statement characterized, characterized by a variable whose highest power is unity okay that means it has a highest power of one okay now let um, x be a variable characterizing let x be a variable characterizing a linear expression okay so we have just said that a linear expression is a mathematical statement characterized by a variable whose highest power is unity that is one okay and let us give a very concrete description of a linear expression so if we call x in particular the variable characterizing a linear expression so let x be a, a variable characterizing a linear expression then we may write or can write we may or can write a linear expression as mx plus c or we can write it the way I would want us to write it we can write it as a1x1 plus a0 so I prefer we write it in this manner and this is because of a particular reason okay I want to link up this video with my discussion on polynomials subsequently now where a1 and a0 are constant with a1 in particular with a1 in particular being a coefficient with a1 in particular being a coefficient to x1 so let's go over what we've said so far and let me explain so a linear expression expression is a mathematical statement so let us start with why I am calling a linear expression a mathematical statement. What we may regard as a mathematical statement is any statement made by you that can be explained or described with the use of mathematical operations or logical operations. So if it is possible to describe whatsoever the statement you've made using a mathematical expression or 
a mathematical um, or logical e uh, expression or operation, then that statement can be called a mathematical statement. Okay, I'm going to come back to that, but hold on a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to say is this. We have said a linear expression is a mathematical statement. Take note, there is another statement here that it is a statement that is characterized by a variable. Okay? So, variables are used to represent non-constant quantities. So, when something is a variable, it means it, is, it can assume changing values. So, if we use x to represent a variable, it means at some point in time, x can be one value and some other point in time, it could be another value. So if x is 3 at the moment, at some point in time, it can assume the value 5, 7, 10, or whatsoever. So in a linear expression, which is a mathematical statement, we usually would use variables to describe what we are saying. So, but what makes a linear expression linear in particular is the fact that in describing what we are saying using a variable that characterizes what we are saying, we must take note of the fact that provided it is linear, the power of the variable must not exceed 1. It, the highest power of the variable must be 1. Okay? Now, this is a linear expression and I prefer using this for a particular reason like I told you earlier on because I would love to link up this video with my discussion on polynomials. So this is an expression that is linear. Why? There is a variable x1 here having a coefficient a1 and having a constant term a0. Take note a1 and a0 are both constant terms but in particular because of the function of a1 when it attaches itself in multiplication to x1 a1 is called a coefficient to x1 because it is a value in multiplication standing beside x1 but unlike a1 a0 has no variable it stands beside so if there is a variable it stands beside the power of that variable is zero okay that is the reason why it is called a constant although both of them are constants a0 and a1 but in particular the name to the constant a1 is coefficient simply because it is the variable it is the value that stands beside the variable x1 okay now let us proceed now i am saying that expressions are different from equations why is that so when making expressions there is no comparison but when you make equations it means you are comparing one expression with another expression or one expression with a constant but when it is called a linear expression it is simply a mathematical statement having no comparison with any other mathematical statement or constant so now take note let me give you a description let us assume that somebody tells you if somebody tells you that i'm going to give you x amount of oranges okay somebody makes a statement i'm going to give you x okay let us even put it this way somebody makes a statement that someone someone else would give you x amount of oranges that is an unknown amount of oranges unknown unknown amount or unknown number of them um, of oranges okay now he tells you someone will give you unknown number of oranges but for every unknown number of oranges that person gives to you he or she will give you an extra two so notice that this statement is a mathematical statement because 
for you to describe what has just been said, you would need a mathematical operation. So the statement again is, somebody comes to you and tells you that someone else, not that person, would give you X number of oranges. But for every orange given to you, every number of orange oranges given to you, he or she would add two to it. So the two is fixed and represents this constant A0. But the X is changing and represents X1. Okay? So that statement could as well have been made this way. The person could also have told you that someone will give you three times an unknown number of oranges. But for every um, three times the number of oranges given to you, he or she would subtract from it the total value, two. That is also a mathematical statement because to describe it, I have used the operation multiplication and I've also used the operation subtraction in order to put together that statement. So this is also a mathematical expression and it is linear just like this one is linear because looking at the variable involved, the highest power of the variable is one. So also is this. So please take note, linear expressions are mathematical statements characterized by a, by a variable whose highest power is unity, that is one, okay? And in particular, we can use this to represent a general linear expression where a1 is a coefficient x1 is um, x, a1 is a coefficient to x1 which happens to be the variable and x0 is a constant although a0 and a1 are constants a1 is a coefficient okay because it stands beside x1 in multiplication now let's go over to linear equations so I hope you understand my explanation on linear expressions. But before that, let me quickly, lest I forget, let me quickly give you several examples in addition to the illustration I've made of linear expressions. So I'm going to call these examples of linear examples of linear expressions. Okay? examples of linear expressions so you have x plus 3 as one you can have 4x minus 8 as another you can have um, 3x plus 7 as another you can have 4x um, minus 3 over 2 as another linear expression you can have um, 5 minus 8x as another linear expression it could even be in a variable say y you can have y minus 2 over 3 this is a linear expression now these are all linear expressions this 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 and this are linear expressions note i have not used them to compare another constant or another linear expression and why are the linear expressions in particular the highest power of the variables in all cases here are one okay that makes them linear however these are not linear expressions examples of um expressions examples of expressions that are not that are not linear that are not linear are number one you could have x squared minus three this is not linear. Why? Because the highest power of the variable is not 1, it is 2. You could have another one, 4x um, raised to power 3 minus 2 is not linear because the highest power of the variable involved is not 1. You could also have um, um, 3x raised to power 0 0.2 minus 2x. Even though you have 1 here as the highest power of x, 
it is not linear because the decimal here cancels everything so these are okay let me add one more you can even have 4x raised to the power half minus 3x and it still will not be linear because the s power of the variable here may be 1 but the fractional power here cancels the fact that it can be linear okay so that being said let us go over to another discussion being linear equations linear equations okay so what are linear equations linear equations linear equations are mathematical statements they are mathematical statements characterizing a mathematical statement characterizing a variable or variables whose highest powers are one are ones and are made up of comparing A, two linear expressions or two a linear expression and a constant I'm gonna go over that again now what we call a linear equation is a mathematical statement just like a linear expression but the difference between a linear expression and a linear equation is that linear equations involve comparison a comparison of equality between two linear expressions or a comparison of equality between a linear expression and a constant so that implies that you could have this to be as an example of this scenario you could have x plus 3 compared with equality to 4x minus 5 in this case this is me comparing one linear equality linear equality one uh, linear equation um, expression one sorry with linear expression two okay now you could also have this a case where you compare x plus 3 linear a linear equation with a constant let's say 5 okay this is a constant so what what we call linear equations are comparisons of equality between their mathematical statements characterizing a variable whose powers are ones and are made up of comparing two linear expressions or one linear expression and a constant now let's take examples of linear equation so examples of linear equations okay so what are examples of linear equations examples of linear equations are 2x plus 3 equals 5 2x plus 3 equals 5x minus 8 is a linear equation um, 3 over 2x minus 8 is equal to 5 uh, minus 3 over 4x these are examples of linear equations why in the first instance we compared a linear equation a linear expression with a constant in the second we compared two linear expressions in the third we compared two linear expressions and notice they are all linear because the highest power of the variables in each case is one okay so that explains the idea of linear equations now let us generalize using what we did earlier on 
you will notice that in general, if A1, A0, A1 denotes, if A1, A0 and A1 denote constants, with A1, if A1 and A0 denote constants, with A1 being a coefficient to a variable x characterizing a description then we may have we may have this A naught, that is A one x plus A naught is equal to another one B one x plus B naught. In which case, similar to A naught and A one, B one and B naught are also B one and B naught are also questions. So, if we have A naught and um, A one. The same way we have B0 and B1 describing coefficients. So I'm going to call this one x1. I'm going to call this one x2. So if we have two linear equations comparing themselves in equality, two linear expressions comparing themselves in equality, then this will be defined as a linear equation. It may also happen that we have A1 x1 plus A0 equals a constant we may call c these two are examples of linear equations in the first one it may be that you are comparing two linear equations or two linear expressions and in the second one it may be that you are comparing one linear expression with a constant okay now let's move over to the third discussion now the third thing I want to do, the third thing I want to do is to quickly show you how to solve linear equations. Okay, so how to solve linear equations. How to solve linear equations. Now for you to solve linear equations simply means you must consider the following the following rules or the following operations so um, solving linear equations okay may require may require using any of the following rules or operations number one taking like terms taking like terms is one operation you may perform number two multiplying multiplying um, or dividing Multiplying or dividing both sides of the equation by a constant or a coefficient. This may be a routine you will perform. You will perform in getting that done. Number three, adding a constant to both sides of the equation okay adding a constant to both sides of the equation or subtracting a constant from both sides of the equation Okay, 
So these are any of these three operations you can perform in solving linear equations. So let's take an example quickly. Example, solve the following linear equations. Solve the following linear equations. So, number one, 3x plus 6 equals 2x minus 5. Number two, 8y plus 7 is equal to 5. Number three, um, 3z plus 2 is equal to 5z minus 9. So those are three linear equations I want us to solve to illustrate how we could use the, the three steps or the three any of these three techniques. Now take note, you must not use some problems do not require all of them, the use of all of them. Some problems do. Some problems, may, um, there is no order with which these um, routines or operations I've just mentioned here should be used. There is no order. It means it depends on you. In the process of solving, it depends on you which one to start with first or which one you would um, use and which one you would not use. So that, de that depends on the demand of the problem. Okay? Now, before we start solving linear equations, it is very important you understand what the solution to a linear equation is. So I'm going to say here, the solution, what is the solution to a linear equation? The solution to a linear equation can be defined as the value, can be defined as the value of the variable for which for which the equation remains true it is the value of the the variable for which the equation remains true you could also define it as the solution okay you may also define it as the solution to a linear equation is the value of the variable that reduces the equation to zero. Okay? So any of those definitions would describe what we call the solution to a linear equation. Now, let us go quickly into solving the problem. So the very first problem is 3x plus 6 equals 2x minus 5. So take note, these operations are called algebraic processes. So any of these algebraic processes can be performed to solve linear equations. Okay? So those algebraic processes, we are going to use some or all of them in solving this. Now, we are going to start with this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take like terms. Taking like terms simply means subtracting, um, taking all the variables that and taking all the variables to one side and taking all the constants to another side because constant and constant are like terms because they are the same. Variables and variables are like terms because they are the same, of course. So we have to take like terms. But we are, I want us to break the problem one after the other. So what I'm going to do is to start with moving the variables. For me to move 2x to, from the right-hand side to the left hand side. I want students to understand with this video what the real statement is.
because most students would just make the statement, take this to this side, take that to that side, without understanding the true algebraic process going on. So, in this video, I won't just take 3 and 2x to this side to become minus 2x. I'm going to show you why that is actually so. And I won't take, I won't just take this to this side without telling you that is to give you minus 5 minus 6 without telling you how it actually moves. So the question is, what is the actual algebraic procedure going on there? What is actually going on here is that to start with, when moving the variables, because we want to move 2x from this side, being the right hand side to the left hand side, because it is positive, we are going to subtract an equal amount from it. So if you subtract 2x from itself, it will elim eliminate 2x from here. And because there is an equal to, and you are subtracting 2x from itself on the right hand side, you must subtract that 2x from the left hand side. So what we'll start with is 3x minus 2x plus 6 on the left hand side and 2x minus 2x minus 5 on the right hand side. So what am I doing? I am subtracting 2x from both sides. Now 2x minus 2x will give us 0 and this will make us have 5 left. Okay. Now on this other side, 3x minus 2x will give us x and we'll be left with x plus 6 over here. Now when you do that, x plus 6 would now be equal to 0 minus 5 gives you minus 5. Okay? Now, what have we successfully done? We have moved successfully the, um, the variables to one side. We've taken like terms and we've simplified. So, the next algebraic routine we are going to perform will be to move the constants to one place. So, in this case, I'll be moving 6 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Now, for me to do that would mean, because this is positive 6, I'm going to subtract negative 6. Because only negative 6 can, can um, cancel positive 6. I'm going to subtract negative 6 from positive 6. And that will maintain the balance if only I subtract, I do the same thing to the right hand side. So now this 6 minus 6 gives 0. So this will reduce to x plus 0. And this will now become this minus this. Minus 5 minus 6 is adding negatively. And that will give you minus 11. x plus 0 is x. And this will give you x equals minus 11. Okay. Now. So we have our solution as x equals minus 11. Now, let us go back to this statement. What did we define the solution of a linear equation to be? The solution of a linear equation or to a linear equation can be defined as the value of the variable for which the equation remains true. Or you can define it as the solution to a linear equation is the value of the variable that reduces the equation to zero. Any of those definitions will do. So let us use those definitions to check what we have done. So I'm going to put here, check. Okay, so let us check. What we want to check is if truly minus 11, x equals minus 11 is a solution to that problem. So we are given 3x plus 6 equals 2x minus 5. Okay, so to check if this is true, we are going to put in place of x minus 11 on the left hand side. So let's do that. That will give us 3 times minus 11 plus 6. What will we get on this side? We will get 3 times minus 11 is minus 33. Minus 33 plus 6 will give us... um. That will give us minus 27. So we end up having minus 27 over here. Now if we come over to this side and put in the right hand side 
in place of x if we put minus 11 let's see what happens so 2 times minus 11 minus 5 is what we end up having 2 times minus 11 is minus 22 minus 22 minus 5 will give you minus 27 so notice that x equals minus 11 is truly the solution because when we substituted into the problem it makes the problem true that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and if you take minus 27 which is on this side to this other side where you have minus 27 also you would notice that the result will be zero because this will become this one that comes here becomes 27 and this is minus 27 so again confirming the second definition that it is the, pro the solution to a linear equation is that value that reduces the equation to zero okay so let us go to the second problem for for the second problem i i is 8 y plus 7 equals 5 now let us see you have to perform the following routine in this case we would only need to move 7 to this side from the left hand side to the right hand side now for us to do that means we are going to since 7 is positive we are going to subtract 7 from both sides so that's the algebraic process I'm performing there and that would mean 7 minus 7 gives you 0 and 5 minus 7 will give you minus 2 so this reduces to 8y equals minus 2 because 8y plus 0 is 8y now at this point in time you notice that y has a coefficient 8 so but the problem is not to find 8y the problem is to find y so what we are going to do will be to divide both sides for us to eliminate um, 8 we have to use a corresponding 8 to divide both sides and that is because 8 is multiplying y so when 8 is multiplying y, it is the coefficient of y. So if it is multiplying y, to remove 8, you have to divide both sides by 8. If 8 was dividing y, to remove 8, we will have to multiply both sides by 8. Okay? So this would mean 8y over 8 is equal to minus 2 over 8. So 8 will cancel 8, and you end up having y equals minus 2 over 8, which will reduce when you simplify to minus 1 over 4 because 2 cancels itself and 2 cancels 8 to the 4 so this is the solution to that problem y is equal to y is equal to minus 1 over 4 now let's come over here again and check is this solution correct let's see so for us to check whether the solution to our problem is correct we are going to resubstitute this value minus 1 over 4 the value of y into this equation okay 8y plus 7 equals 5 so I'm going to bring this here 8y plus 7 is equal to 5 is it true so I'm going to put in place of y I'm going to put minus 1 over 4 so this will give us this now when you simplify 4 will cancel itself cancel a to give 2 so you end up having minus 2 because 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 plus 7 and that will give us 5 that will give that will give us 5 so it means the solution x and um, y equals minus 1 over 4 is true okay now let us go to the third problem for the third problem we have um, we were given 3z plus 2 equals equals 5z minus 9 so to solve this problem we will, will require ourselves to perform the following so I could bring this over here and that would mean as usual subtracting 5z from both sides so I'm going to subtract 5z from this plus 2 I'm going to come over here and subtract 5z from itself so that's what I'm going to have 5z minus 5z will give us 0 
3z minus 5z will give us minus 2z. So that's me taking like terms, okay? Now, the problem reduces to this. The problem reduces to that because 5z minus 5z is 0. 0 minus 9 will give you minus 9. 3z minus 5z is equal to minus 2z minus 2z plus 2 is what is left over there. So we would now reduce further. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to take 2 away from this, from this side to this other side. So you end up having minus 2z equals um, minus 2z plus 2 minus 2 is equal to minus 9 minus 2. Now notice I am subtracting 2 from both sides because to cancel out these two, we will need to subtract its the same. Uh, um, we will need to subtract two, something equal to it in magnitude from it. So this will reduce to zero plus two minus two is zero, and this will reduce to minus eleven. So the problem reduces to minus two z is equal to minus eleven. So the next thing to do here will be to eliminate this minus 2. So to do that, I will have to divide both sides. I will have to divide both sides by minus 2. Okay? So dividing both sides by minus 2 means minus 2 over z all over minus 2 and here minus 11 all over minus 2. All over minus 2. So this will cancel, leaving me with z, and this will give me minus cancels minus, that's minus, and you end up having 11 over 2, which is 5.5. Okay, so that solves the problem. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is called linear graphs linear graphs okay this can also be called we can also call this okay so we can define linear graphs linear graphs can be defined as graphs of linear equations graphs of linear equations so if we have a linear equation of the form um, y equals um, a1x plus a0 so if we have a linear equation as this then what will the graph be like so the graph of a linear equation is called a linear graph, okay? So, how do we plot linear graphs? Now, let's see. I'm going to show you what to do. Now, um, typically, before we commence, the graph of a linear equation is a graph of this equation, and it means you have the y-axis and you have the x-axis. Now, in the y and x-axis, we have, for this particular equation, we have a straight line such that what is called the slope is described by A1 to be the change in y all over the change in x. And what is called the y-intercept is our a naught. So, whenever you are asked to find the solution, the graphical solution to a linear equation, there is always a domain given to you. That is a range of the x values, okay? The range of the x values. So I'm going to show you with one or two examples how to, to solve or to, to plot a linear graph, okay? 
but I'm going to be using a sketch in this video. So let us see. Let us see how that is done. It is very simple. So um, the problem now is plot the linear graph for the um, plot the linear graph for the equations below okay so one y equals 3x plus 2 where x can assume values ranging from 1 to 4 mm? 2 plot the linear graph of y equals 5x minus 1 where x can assume values within the range 0 to 3 okay now all you have to do is let's take as our solution number one all you have to do to start with is to put up a table like this okay so you put up a table like this and write here your x values so you've been told for number one that x ranges from one to, to four so you have one two three and then four now what you are going to do over here is to put the contents as you have them on the equation put the terms so this is 3x so you are going to put 3x here this is 2 you are going to put it here okay now the belief is that when you add a 3 um, 3 times the value of x here to 2 it will give you your corresponding y value okay it will give you your corresponding y value so what I'm going to do here is this okay what I'm going to do is to I'm going to add this sorry okay I'm going to add I'm going to add this quickly let's see so 3 times 1 when x is 1 3 times 1 is what we have and 3 times 1 will give us 3 when x is 2, 3 times 2 will give us 6. When x is 3, 3 times 3 will give us 9. When x is 4, 3 times 4 will give us 12. Okay? Now, because this is a constant, whether x is 1, 2, 3, or 4, it does not change. So we are going to put 2, 2, 2, and 2. Okay? So... Remember the illustration I gave you on linear expressions. No matter the amount of oranges given to you, a particular value is added to it. So that value that is added to it is, is constant, okay? So no matter the value of x, 2 remains constant. So what you're going to do here is to add 3 plus 2 to get a y value of 6. 6 plus 2 to get a y value of 8. 9 plus 2 to get a y value of 11. And... 12 plus 2 to get a y value of 14. Now, when you finish doing this, bring out a summary table with which you can then plot your graph. So you're going to bring out a summary table here where you have x and then y. So up here you have the x values 1, 2, 3, and 4. Down here you have the corresponding y values 6 8 11 and 14 okay now so these are the corresponding y values to the, the x values now i'm going to come over here and give a sketch okay so i'm going to put a sketch here of the graph sorry this is not a graph sheet but it should make you understand nonetheless so this is y and this is x okay now, for you to plot the linear graph, take a good look at your values. 
I've quickly drawn this because my values are clearly positive. My x values are positive, my y values are positive. Now take note, the next thing you need to do is to choose a suitable scale. And a suitable scale to choose depends on your y and x values. If you look at your x values, you will notice that they are 1, 2, 3, 4. The maximum is 4, the minimum is 1. If you look at your y values, the maximum is 14 and the minimum is 6. So I could use, if these represent small boxes on my y axis, let's assume this were to be, this was to be, um, this uh, was actually a graph sheet. Let's assume this was a graph sheet and these are the small boxes on my graph sheet. Now, take note, I would have one here Okay, on my uh, on my y axis, I will choose a scale of um. Okay, so on my y axis, sorry for that interruption. So if you have um. A value here two. It means you are using a scale of, um. One centimeter, to two units. Okay on your y axis but on your x axis you can comfortably use one centimeter to one unit now one centimeter to two unit means after every um, small box you would be writing two so after the next small box is four this is six this is eight this is 10 this is 12 and this is 14 so that it accommodates my maximum value and this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay? Because my maximum x value is 4. Now, all you have to do is to now plot. Okay? So, looking at the summary table, when x is 1, y is 6. So, when x is 1, y is 6. I'm going to trace this up to this point and I'll put my plot here. Okay, now the next one, when x is 2, y is 8. When x is 2, y is 8 means somewhere around here, my, my plot would be there. When x is 3, y is 11. So I'm going to take this up. 11 should find itself between 10 and um, 12. And when x is um, 4, when x is 4, y is 14. So when x is 4, y is 14. I will have somewhere around here. Now, if this were to be a graph sheet, you would notice that you have a straight line that passes through this. It will actually give you a straight line, okay? So, this straight line is the graph of y equals 3x plus 2. The straight line will give you the graph of y equals 3x plus 2. So, I want you to try this using a graph sheet. Try this using a graph sheet, okay? It will give you a very vivid picture of what is going on. Now, also, I would want you to try obtaining this, okay? I want you to try obtaining this as an exercise and you, would, um, you won't find it difficult because the routine is already very simple. Now, please like our video, share our video, and most importantly, subscribe to our youtube channel take note for every video i make on a particular subject matter for or on a particular topic there is always a corresponding solver series in my solver series videos for instance on linear equations and linear expressions all i do in such videos is to solve problems but what i'll be using in a, in the main video are illustrations okay which is not sufficient so, in my solver series videos on linear equations, there are so many problems. It is a continuous video that takes care of problems on linear expressions and linear equations. So, like our video, um, share our video, watch our video, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you all in a bit. Thank you.